What do we know? On March 25th, 2024, a county judge issued a writ of possession commanding the sheriff's office to remove all persons from the address in the 6,000 block of Indira Road and turn the property over to the owners. Deputies with our civil execution unit served that warrant around 1.30 earlier in that day and removed Evans from the property. The owners took possession of the property, changed the locks on the, on the doors, and left the residence there shortly later. They returned to the residence around 6 p.m., and the owners contacted the sheriff and said that Evans had broken back into the house and was there. Deputies then respond back to the residence where they encountered Evans, told him again, you have to leave. They have spoke to him. They pled with him. Um, ultimately, Evans decided to not cooperate and close the door on the deputies. Um, the deputies having the key to the residence from the new owners opened the front door. When they opened that front door, you see the image of what they saw. Evans standing in the hallway pointing a firearm at the deputies. The deputies yelled out to Evans to drop the firearm multiple times. They took a position of cover, he took a position of cover, and then he stepped out from cover again pointing the firearm at the deputies where one round was fired, striking uh, Evans. Um, Evans was then taken into custody. He was provided life-saving uh, efforts by our deputies. They applied a tourniquet until St. Lucie County Fire Rescue came and transported him to a local hospital where he's in stable condition. Uh, currently, he's still in the hospital um, in stable condition under, under guard. Um, ultimately, this could have been avoided had Evans complied with the court order he was served with early, earlier in the day, evicting him from the residence. Evans chose to return to the residence and break in through the back door. He then chose to not cooperate with deputies to vacate the residence for a second time. Instead of complying with the court order, Evans chose to point a firearm at our deputies. And the only thing to expect doing that is to be shot. Um, Evans, again, is currently in custody at the, St. At the Longwood Hospital, um, three counts of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer, and one count of armed burglary. We'll provide the body cam footage. We'll provide some documents uh, that led up to this. And uh, we are still in active investigation, so we're kind of limited on what we can uh, talk about. But with that, I'm going to pass it over to Captain who heads our Criminal Investigations Division. He might be able to give you a little bit more detailed of the specific incidents if it, the investigation allows that. So with that, I'll pass it over to Captain Norman. Good afternoon. Do we have any questions? Captain Dave Bowman, WPTV. The, in terms of Mr. Evans, is there any known criminal record or any known issues of mental illness? There about? is no criminal record that we could find. Um, he did have an RPO earlier, uh, I think in 2019. Could you tell me what an RPO is? Uh, risk protection order. Okay. So there are a little bit of signs that there has been some issues in the past with him. One other follow-up to this. He's at Longwood Hospital. This year there have been a couple of escapes. Now I know he's obviously injured there. Has that had you take maybe extra precautions to try to avoid it considering there have been a couple of incidents uh, involving prisoners? So uh, Mr. Evans is uh, currently under the security of the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office. He is being guarded by sheriff's deputies. Um, those other cases were not involving anybody we were guarding. Victoria with CBS 12 News. Um, why was there a court order to get him out of the building that he was residing? This stemmed from a uh, foreclosure action on the residence, um, and it was kind of a lengthy process that the new owners went through to get him out of the, uh, the residence. How many times have they tried to get him out of the residence? Uh, it actually started, I believe, in 19, or I don't have it directly. I'm sorry, 23. Okay. They started the process in 23, um, getting the foreclosure and going through that whole process. They were hoping to work with Mr. Evans, hoping that he would finally leave the residence, but he did not. He refused. So, uh, so just the timeline, around 1 o'clock you guys went there to essentially forcefully remove him from the residence, and he left. Locks were changed, and he breaks in at some point. You guys are called by the new owner, I guess the new owners, to come back and, I guess, Remove him again, is that? Yes, sir. Okay. And just one shot was fired by the deputy? Single shot was fired by the deputy. And and Mr. Evans, um, did was his firearm real or was it like fake or? We are currently still processing the firearm, so we're not going to get too much more into the, the actual firearm. How do you spell his name? Uh, we'll, we'll be able to provide you uh, all the information um, as soon as, at the conclusion of this. To be clear, Mr. Evans never fired from his gun? Correct. What's the procedure when you have to get to evict someone? Do you normally always go with the, the landlord? Is there, how, how does that work when it comes to this? 
every situation is different when we're responding to some type of eviction. Um, depends on, on the relationship and depends on the, the paperwork that we have from the courts. All right, step in for a second. You know, what, what the property owners did was they went through the court process. They went to a judge, they had multiple hearings. This uh, order that we received from the county judge was a final eviction order. The order commanded the sheriff's office to remove whoever's, whatever persons were at that residence and turn the property over to the owner of it. So this was a court order that we were only following. So this owner of the property went through the civil process, which is lengthy, went through all the hearings, did all the proper procedures to properly remove, evict this person from their property and was ultimately granted by a county judge. The county judge then gave us an order, which we'll provide to you as well, commanding us to remove anybody at that property and turn that property back over to the original owner. So this wasn't a seven day eviction. This wasn't a, a very, a, a quarrel that happened shortly. This has been a lengthy process uh, that all parties have been involved in. But the, the owners of the property did the right thing. They went through the proper procedures. They went to every court hearing. They filed the proper documents and the judge gave them an order to give to us to serve on anybody at that residence, giving them their property back. So this is a little different than what we've seen recently about the squatters. This is this is more of a eviction. There. So some of the news out or some of the, the new media that you have the squatters, this wouldn't apply a contract there was uh, people living there this went through the court evictions this is not one of the squatter incidents that I've seen a lot lately so when you approached him he um he, he came back he broke into the apartment and broke into the apartment yes ma'am and then and then he pointed his gun at the yes ma'am he he actually talked to deputies for a little while and then he had enough shut the door and when they opened the door he was holding a firearm pointing it at him is there a reason why he decided to stay and come back even though there was those court orders? So we uh, we'll be having conversations with him a little bit later on today and we're going to try to get some of those answers. Was this a multi-unit building and was he the only one that was pushing back on eviction or any others evicted prior days, weeks, or months to this? For this actual yes. apartment yes. type? No, there's no one else. It was just him. Had he been like, was he a renter there for a period of months or years? I'm just going to, I'll answer that question. I'm just going to circle back to yours. So from what we understand, uh, what we gathered, these individual units were private owned. Um, and, the, and the person had purchased the unit through a foreclosure quite some time ago. Um, the He was a previous uh, tenant or there. And the new owners had purchased it through a foreclosure. They've been dealing with the process of evicting him. Um, and that, that process. Back to 2023. So this isn't the entire apartment complex. No. This is one unit by an individual or doesn't affect the rest of the uh, the, the individual apartments there. And Will, what was your question? Um, no, I can't. <laughs> what was the name of the apartment? It was Indian Pines Apartments. It's the 6,000 block of Injura Road. Indian Pines. I believe. He shot. I will ask. I want to answer that. Mr. Evans was struck in the uh, hand and the arm. And only one shot fired from the deputy. Yes, ma'am. Was it from two, two places, though? Five. And the arm. Ah. And the arm. Well, he was pointing the gun and he shot him. We'll, uh, we'll release the video and we'll let you be the, the judge of You'll that. be able to see the video and see what our deputies saw when they, they opened the door and encountered the mail. In terms of the deputy that discharged the weapon, is he on is he back to duty, administrative leave? What's yeah, so, uh, you know, men mental health is a big thing. This is a traumatic situation for anybody to go through, including the deputy and uh, other residents in that neighborhood. Um, for our, our standard, um, the deputy's on administrative leave. We're going to get him, uh, he's going to speak to a mental health uh, physician um, as part of our procedure just to make sure that he's okay, that he's prepared to return to duty. But as soon as he's, as soon as he's ready, I'm prepared to put him back on the streets. Um, again, he, this deputy put his, his self in the line um, to protect our community, and, and we're extremely proud of him. Can you describe, and I know you don't want to release his name, but were the, could you describe some of the things that this deputy's done specifically that earned him these commendations that you talked about? Um, I don't have his, uh, his, his file is extremely lengthy, uh, being here over 10 years. Um, he's has, uh, 
uh, different combinations and, and awards for different things. He did start his career here in the Department of Detention, um, where he earned his combat injury award from being injured uh, by being attacked by one of the, the individuals that we had incarcerated. Uh, he, he suffered a severe injury. So that's one of our highest awards that an individual can get. Um, the, the community loves him. His team loves him. The other deputies love him. Like I said, he's, he's an amazing deputy. He's exactly what, what everybody would want when they call 911 to have uh, this, this deputy or this type of deputy respond and, and come to their time of need. And is there an internal affairs investigation? Is that proper protocol since there was a deputy involved shooting? It'll, it'll be reviewed um, as soon as, as we, we, we haven't even had a chance to interview the suspect to see what his, his mind frame was. Um, him still being in the hospital, I'm sure he's medicated. Um, so we want to make sure that whenever we do talk to him that we're getting a clear understanding of, of why didn't you just comply? Why didn't you just follow the court order? So those are questions that we still have. Again, you know, we put, we put a message out on, on social media last night within an hour of our officer actually discharging his firearm just to let people know. And here we are at record speed trying to get the, the information to you guys so that you could, you know, spread it. Um, so the internal investigation would we'll follow here shortly, but there will be an internal review of the incident um, to make sure that our policies were followed. But again, the initial on-site looking at it, uh, again, the deputy did, did an amazing job. After he gets released from the hospital, uh, 63-year-old gentleman, he'll be taken to jail on three counts of aggravated assault on Leo and one count of burglary? Yes, sir. So as the three counts um, goes to, we had multiple deputies on scene. But when he pointed the firearm through the door, we had three deputies standing there. We had uh, one to the left of him, one to the right, and then the deputy that discharged his firearm was in the, it was in the center, was the, the straight line of fire. Dan? Yeah, one, one question. Um, the new laws that are being put out by Governor DeSantis, would that in the situation make it any easier going forward for this type of thing, uh, make it be safer in terms of evictions for Bad tenants, water, things like that. So um, from what we understand that that law just came out, so we're still interpreting it. We're going to see how we're going to apply it and how we're going to roll that policy out. Um, but again, this situation is completely different. This is a tenant who was lawfully there and didn't want to leave, and the owners went through the proper process, the courts of evicting it. The squatters is more of somebody, you go on vacation and somebody takes over your house and, and claims that they have rights. So anytime that there was a legal tenant that transfers to a dispute or a civil action, that, that doesn't apply to the squatter uh, scenario that, that I understand. Now again, we're still in the, in the, in the process of uh, reviewing those laws and understanding it, but we also want to make sure we don't want to, we don't want to just go out there and do something. We want to make sure that our deputies have the proper, the proper guidance and the proper tools to uh, deal with squatters. But we will hold squatters accountable. We will remove them if it falls within the guidance of the law.